Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah. Delicious. Today is Thursday, uh, December 29th, penultimate podcast of 2022. And uh, yeah another year down. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say that yet since uh, that'll be tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow I will say that. Uh, so um, I don't know about other parts of the world but this time of year in the U.S. always feels um, a little bit like a space out of time. Does that actually make sense? Uh, a lot of people are on vacation. A lot of businesses in the U.S. shut down between Christmas and New Year's. Um, I know right now the Sifwa board is on hiatus, so I don't have meetings. I haven't been looking at email. I've sort of been taking advantage of that time to decompress. Oh. The little kitty is crying outside my door. Should we let him in? David just went to the store. I shut my office door when I'm podcasting just because of background noise and distractions. <clears throat> but David just put Jackson out and went to the store. And Killian was crying outside the door. Killian being our new kitten, if you missed the podcast on Tuesday. So now he's in here wreaking havoc. <laughs> At least he's still little enough that the habit he wreaks isn't so much. But he's uh, terribly cute. Very, the, he's um, kind of getting used to being into, in our house now. And uh, he slept a whole lot of yesterday in the bathroom sink, which was really freaking cute. And today he is very playful and exploratory. I guess he was really running around all night. So anyway... Um, yeah, this always feels like a good time to sort of be doing things without a lot of input from other people. Um, I know uh, several people who are like off at ski lodges and doing various vacation things this week. So it's funny to me to be working, but it also is a good time to be brewing up this new book which is what I'm doing. I'm working on Rogue Familiar now. And I had a good day yesterday. Um, I got over 2,000 words. Yes. Uh, very exciting. Uh, really focusing on ramping up back up to 3,000 words a day. I really want to try to get there and see if I can do it in a sustainable way so that I don't burn out and so forth. <laughs> oh, David's coming back. So, um, yeah, I'm sort of bringing back my old tools to try to see about ramping up. Um, maybe going at things with the approach of doing 3,000 words a day when I can and then taking more breaks between or uh, letting the downtime between be okay. I still um, haven't finished all of my number crunching for the end of the year. I'll probably just do that all on the podcast Monday and talk about um, what my plans for the year ahead are. So, so we'll see. But I was really happy to get those words yesterday. You know, some of it might come from writing back in a very familiar world where I kind of know the story and the characters. Um, but yeah, I was, I was pleased with that. So um, before Christmas, I... Uh, I start. I, I should go where where my thoughts are going. Um, my mom doesn't love the name for our cat. She says she's never heard of another Killian, human or animal. So I just sent her the definition, uh, the name, um, a masculine name of Irish origin. We should be spelling it with a, a C, but I think we could still. Uh, it should be Killian with a C. Uh, it comes from the name from the Celtic word Killa and translates to bright-headed and little warrior. And we named him that because he's red. Killian's red. 
uh, it works on multiple levels. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about epistolary novels uh, a little before, and I guess I'll pause right now because apparently a lot of people don't know what that means. Epistolary means a novel that is told by a correspondence. So uh, there are a number of famous books that are uh, told in all in correspondence. Sometimes there's a lot of correspondence, sometimes just a little bit. Um, there are also like biographies. I have one of um, from John Adams and Abigail Adams called Dearest Friend. In fact, I should get that out and read it. I wonder where it is. Hmm, I should look for that. Uh, reading about a story that takes shape from letters that people exchange is fascinating to me. And what's interesting is in today's social media landscape, where so many of my friends are not actually right here, uh, many of my relationships are epistolary, right? Uh, we do a lot of text and chatting, which goes back and forth very quickly, but some people take longer to respond and it becomes more epistolary. So anyway, before Christmas, I posted to social media uh, those of you who follow me there may have seen that, where I said I was in the mood for an epistolary romance. Um, sorry, I had to sneeze there. So anyway, I posted that I was in the mood for an epistolary romance. And I got a lot of suggestions for books that weren't necessarily romances. But it was really cool to see the, um, the exchange, the, the stories that people suggested because I'm in the thick of the science fiction and fantasy community. Um, numerous people suggested how to lose the time war. Correction, this is how you lose the time war um, by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone, which um, received the Nebula Award for Best Novella and the Hugo for Best no Novella. Um, you know, I liked it fine. Um, it wasn't the kind of romance that I personally wanted, uh, but I did enjoy the book. Novella. Um, it is, I think, bloodthirstier than, than I like. Um, yeah. So anyway, I had already read that one. I also received a recommendation from, let me find it. Beneath Ceaseless Skies magazine uh, replied to me suggesting a story they had published uh, by Marissa Lynn called Every Tiny Tooth and Claw or Letters from the First Month of the New Directorate. Uh, that one is really excellent in that it is told entirely in letters um, and I really loved it. Uh, I did tweet that I liked it and um, asked Marissa where the novel is and uh, probably short story writers hate hearing that, but you know, I want the novel. Reader, there will be no novel. Alas. Uh, but yes, that one was very satisfying. Um, Marissa replied saying, thank you so much. I'm not making this story into a novel, but one of my back burner projects is a novel that's in the same world about 10 years down the timeline with some of the same characters. So, so that's cool. Um, I also got a recommendation from, I love it when uh, like online magazines reply to me. Um, so the fabulous replied to me and suggested A Thousand Folds by Andy Winter, which I have pinned, but have not yet read. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. Uh, books that I did pick up and start reading right away was I read 84 Sharing Crossroad by Helene Humph. Um, kind of by Helene. Uh, she's the author on the book, but it's a correspondence between her and a bookseller in London that takes place over 20 years and various other people at the same bookseller. And it is uh, a book that I know I had on my shelf for a really, really long time. It survived many book purges, 
when I was like, okay, I should finally go read this book. And it's slim. It's such a fast read. When I finally, where it's like, okay, I want an epistolary book. This is one of the most famous epistolary books of all time. And I went to find it. And apparently it finally went out. I, I kind of remember finally getting rid of it. It was like, okay, it's been on my TBR pile for, you know, umpty million years. It's time for it to go. So I had to, there was not a Kindle version. So I bought a used copy and it arrived the other day and I read it. It, it took me, you know, like a full day basically to read. I started it on, um, well, I could even tell you since I wrote it down, but not that it matters. Yep. I started it on Tuesday and finished it yesterday and it was a wonderful read. I loved it. I loved it. And um, Helene Humph has such an infectious voice that it really did infiltrate my consciousness. And I felt like I was saying things like she would. Uh, it's not a romance, but it's a kind of friendship. And it's one that's based on books and writing and conversations about what you know, how books are bound and all this. And now it makes me want to read in print again, which uh, I read that in print, obviously. I've read a couple of books in print now. What has become of me? Uh, mostly because, well, I talked a little while back that um, my friend Alex Gorevich, who is the financier, had given me a copy of his book, The Traits of March, and that was in paper. And I read that coming back, starting coming back from Kauai and finished reading it on paper. So now that I have my readers, um, I'm more comfortable reading on paper and I may be going back to a reading on paper kick. We shall see. I really do prefer reading on Kindle. It's so much easier. I'm trying out another book that was recommended to me. That's epistolary. I'm reading this sample and I'm still making up my mind on that one. So we'll see. But um, I highly recommend 84 Sharing Cross Road. It's a wonderful glimpse into history. It starts in 1950 and, you know, post-war London. A lot of things I didn't realize about London um, and what people's lives were like. But it's also just, um, it's hard to explain. It's, it's infectiously enlightening. Highly recommend. The other book I highly recommend that I read was... Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, which is a romance, and it was such a satisfying romance. Oh, delightfully satisfying romance. And this is a book that came out a few years ago, and it felt like everybody was reading it. And it's got something like 28,000 ratings on Amazon. It was really a big hit. Um, did I say Casey, Casey McQuiston? And it was her debut, their debut. I'm not sure what Casey's pronouns are. I guess I could look. Okay, she says any pronouns, so we'll just go with she since that um, seems to be easiest. So, um, yeah, I felt like I was intrigued by the premise. So the premise is that there's uh, a woman president of the U.S. basically elected instead of Trump. So she's kind of a Hillary um uh, and, and, and so some of the alternate history is very funny right now, but, and she has two children, one of whom is Alex, who is 21 and he is half Mexican and suave and high intensity kind of guy. And he starts having a love affair with Prince Henry who is the son of Princess Caroline in sort of an alternate uh, British monarchy. They have that it's Queen Mary instead of Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and so the two of them, and, and Prince Henry is 23, and they start out as kind of enemies um, and become friends and become lovers. And Alex discovers that he's bisexual and so it is, of course, a homosexual love affair. And a lot of it is epistolary with them exchanging um, phone calls, texts, and emails with each other. And it was, um, 
it was delightful in the way the West Wing is delightful in that it shows all of the aspects of politics the way we want them to be. Um, but that it was also just full of all of that delicious thrill of, you know, like the first son and the prince and having the love affair and they compare themselves to Han Solo and Princess Leia. Um, prince Henry is obviously Leia. Um, and he even says, I happen to like nice men. There was some wonderful, Casey really does excel at, um, you know, like grounding in the popular milieu. She's younger, so she really kind of um, captures that whole millennial Gen Z vibe in a way that I found absolutely delightful. I had read her second book and um, actually didn't finish. Uh, it just didn't work for me. And I know she's got a third one that just came out. But this is one that um, the Kindle was so expensive. It was um, $11 to buy this on Kindle. St. Martin's, my publisher, uh, I had considered several times asking them to send me a free copy, but I try to um, parse out my requests that way. But I'm glad I bought it. Um, it, it, deserves, it deserves the hype it got. It was a wonderful book to read over Christmas. It was, yeah, wonderful. So that one's not fully epistolary. It's partially. So, so there's a lot of different ways to do an epistolary novel or nonfiction books. I should say uh, epistolary book. Um, and so, so yes, I'm still taking Rex because I'm on this cruise of, reading these things. And I'm also seriously considering writing an epistolary book. I haven't decided which one is it going to be? Not either of the two novels I'm currently writing. Um, <laughs> uh, see, this is part of the thing for me is wanting to be able to produce more is that I want to be able to get to some of these ideas faster than I have been which I suppose goes against what I was saying on Tuesday that I want to be smart this year about picking the projects that, um, you know, contribute to financial comfort. There's also that burning, I don't know, artistry, whatever. I've, I've become aware that I'm very reluctant to refer to myself as an artist or to my work as art. Um, I usually refer to it as work. And I'm sure that there's some psychology behind that. So at any rate, I um, there is this thing in me where I really, really want to tell these stories, where I want to write these things. And it's tempting to, to switch over and write the thing. But, and I could talk about this more tomorrow because I'm almost out of time today. And I've talked about it before. But I just got this question from somebody last night was like, you know, do you write down ideas as soon as you have them? And how do you know, um, you know, how do you keep track of ideas? So I should talk about that. I'm going to make a note. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's always that push pull between wanting to write the idea now um, while I'm really excited about it. And, but then also being aware that at least I believe that the idea will wait and that it will ripen. So there we have it. All right. On that note, I'm going to go focus on the novel I'm supposed to be writing, which is one that will lead to financial comfort. So we're on track there. If, um, if all goes well, maybe I'll get 3,000 words today. Let's cross our fingers. All right. I uh, hope you all are enjoying this kind of weird hiatus, suspended time between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, whether you celebrate either, I think it would sort of infects all the world. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. You all take care. Bye-bye.